right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, giving double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. This is a brother Izar. And I'm going to be going into uh, Revelations 13 just because, you know, I got in a conversation yesterday. Uh, we were conversing about, you know, unwillingly, you know, but according to the Spirit of the Most High, you know, gave me a topic for today. But, uh, you know, somebody was, was telling me that, all right, the, you know, this Christian was telling me that, uh, that in Revelations, you know, they were talking about Revelations 12, Revelations 13, talking about how, you know, that the Antichrist has to arise first, and then after the Antichrist arises, all right, um, that it's going to be given power to uh, overthrow the prophets, and the prophets are going to lodge here for three and a half years, and then the seventh trumpet's going to go off, and when the seventh trumpet goes off, you know, the Lord is going to come back and take those prophets, the chosen men, all right, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to go into the tribulation, and, you know, that we're going to go into all that stuff, which, which is, you know, completely, completely untrue, man, you know, the Christian way of, of looking at things, man, just needs to, you know, people just need to stop. You know, they don't understand the scriptures, man, because that's not what Revelations is talking about. You know, it's not what Revelations is talking about. Now, they bring out the thing about, uh, you know, three and a half years and uh, and all that stuff, which Lord willing, I, I can get into, you know, as I'm driving. But uh, I'm just going to start it off with the beginning, because even at that, you know, those are things that are misunderstood things that are skipped over, you know, uh, historic periods, you know, because a lot of Christians, when, when they go into, into scriptures, man, and when they talk about, you know, their faith, <clears throat> they separate, they separate the real world, all right, and the scriptures, they separate them, when in reality, history and the scriptures go to go together. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes to a Christian, and I know this by uh, by uh, experience, man. You know, I know this by experience because whenever I came into this truth, I started seeing the scriptures as something completely different. You see, I started seeing it as as something factual, something that was what well, was the baseline <clears throat> or, or the base, I should say, um, the foundation. All right, the root of my faith. You know, it wasn't no religion, all right, loosely based off of the scriptures. It wasn't anything like that, man. It was it was solely the scriptures, the word of the Most High was the base and the root of my belief system, you know, which is the truth. You see, when it comes to Christians, they, they, they can't put two and two together. They, they keep them separate. They keep one as a fairy tale that they like to think about. And they keep the other one as a daily life. All right, well, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. But my faith belongs in my mind, basically, is how they have it. You know? They don't keep it in the real world. Which the, the scriptures is more true than the real world, man. But, uh, you know, they, they don't associate it with, with history. They think everything hasn't happened yet. You know, all these prophecies, you know, the, the, this hasn't happened yet. And things that are are un, that are not convenient to them, all oh, those already happened. You know, they're loosely basing their faith off of the scriptures, man, with no works to follow. You know, they don't have any type of base uh, baseline of uh, their faith. You know, everything is just all over the place, man. You know. And if you're a true follower of the Most High, whose name is Yahweh, all right, Y-A-H-A-W-A-H, Yahweh, which means He is, He exists, and He is to be. And His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, 
because Yahweh Shai says it says that he came in the name of the Father. You see? So, you know, Yahweh Shai's name means, you know, he he is to save. You know, he is a deliverer. Which that that's what Yahweh Shai is. He saves through the Most High Yahweh. You know, he's a mediator. He's not the Most High. All right. But he is the mediator between us and the Most High. You know? But, uh, so without further ado, let me start it off. Revelation 13 and 1. You know, Lord when I can switch back and forth through scriptures. But it says, uh, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. You know? And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And this is, uh, you know what people call, who people call John the Revelator. All right. He's John the Apostle. The Apostle John. Um, he said that he stood up on the sand of the sea. And then he says, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Okay. Now, he could have literally seen it. You know, it's quite possible the Most High shows dreams in certain ways. All right, and then when it's interpreted, you know, it, it's it's being polished, you know, it's being made uh, into terms of of um, making sense, you know, just like the dream that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had and Daniel the prophet had to polish it so it can clarify what that statue represented, all right, which was a uh, different kingdoms, you know, but it says, uh, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Alright, so if you go to Revelation 17 and 15, it's a lot here. Uh, Revelation 17 and 15, it says, And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues alright so the waters in Revelation 13 the sand of the sea alright and the sea and the waters that the beast came out of alright that beast represents um, NATO the EU you know and it represents nations, tongues, kindreds, peoples. You see? And that whore that sitteth upon the beast is talking about the eighth head, which is of the seven. The eighth head, which is of the seven. All right? Um, which we'll get into because it's also in Revelation 17. But, uh, so like it. But, uh, you know, the, the seven heads represents uh, kingdoms. Same thing with the ten horns, which has uh, ten crowns, you know. But it says the waters are, are people, you know. The whore that sitteth there is Babylon the Great, all right, or, the, or better yet, the virgin daughter of Babylon. The daughter of the Chaldeans, as it says in Isaiah 47. All right, that's the great whore that the that really everybody hates. You know, so it says, um, going back to Revelation 13, it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. Salakia. Salak. Um, so it says, And I stood up on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. All right, so we'll go into that word beast. That word beast is Thareon, 
tareon, which means an animal, a wild animal, a wild beast, a beast, or used as a metaphor for a brutal, bestial man, a savage, and a ferocious man. You know? So it could represent Salakia. God damn it. It can represent um, a kingdom of, of, of a man. Alright? Kingdom of men. So it's not talking about some mythical creature. Alright? It's not talking about some, you know, mythical, you know, Babylon or no spiritual Babylon. It's talking about a physical, alright? And, and, and um, a true, you know, uh, evil rulership you know so it says um, let me reread it again so like get this fucking car man you know everything is fine but once I start recording you know this fucking Goddamn demons, man. It says, uh, Revelations 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And now we know that the, you know, the sand can also represent people. The sea represents nations, tongues, kindreds. All right. It says, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So the sea, all right, that beast that rose up out of the sea is talking about, you know, this man. All right. The rulership of men. That came from the nations. Alright. It says having seven heads. And ten horns. So those seven heads represents. Seven different time periods. That these people were in rulership. Alright. And it starts out. With. Uh, you know. Uh, the Greek. Which the first to rule over. The stead of the Greek was. Um, Alexander the Great. And then, and Alexander the Great is an Edomite, you know. And then you have the uh, the Roman, Germania Major, Germania Minor. And then you have that thousand year period, all right, that this man was put down. You see, which is the Edomites. After that thousand year period, they came through, they came back through the Renaissance. The name or the meaning of, of the word renaissance is the rebirth, all right? So in order to be rebirthed, it means you had to die first. And he was, his mind was was uh, was set up in a prison, all right? His mind was a prison. He was brought down to becoming the, the basest of men, you know, as Job describes it, which is talking about the Edomites. You know so after this this the Edomites started coming back they called it the rebirth you know calling it the rebirth means um, you know to come back to be reborn you see so they started uh, what is it called um, iconoclast you know when they go into different places and they whitewash it and that's what they did they whitewashed who the israelites are that's why job 9 and 4 or it's like 9 and 24 says um the earth is given into the hand of the wicked all right he covereth the faces of the judges thereof if not who and uh, uh where is he you know and it's talking about the edomites you see so this beast that rose up was a group of of, of uh, Edomite nations you know and then it gives you seven different time periods that they were a nation all right which has been one after another it hasn't been any other uh, rulership of any other people it's been Edomite oppression all right Edomite rulerships started off with the Greeks and then the Romans and then Germania Major Germania Minor which were provinces of the Roman Empire a thousand year period passed all right, and this man was put into uh, chains. His mind was a prison. 
and then he came back the most high brought back that knowledge and understanding into this man all right which the smartest edomites are the german you know and then they came back as the spanish they came back as the french and they came back as the english which would be seven all right and that eighth head that is of the seven all right which the seven hate that that eighth head or these other nations i should say these other nations hate that that eighth head which would be america that came from the seven which would be english uh great britain you know so those are the seven heads and the eighth that came of the seven would be america which is the great whore that sitteth upon the beast you know and a woman she has a head too and that's why that effeminate spirit is out here in this world man because that's something that is being pushed you know but those are the seven heads and the ten horns all right when you go into it <clears throat> you know you have uh the treaty of rome you know what i'll just get into it and i'll come back to the ten horns you know which are uh ten crowns which represents kingdoms all right represents nations it says and upon his head is the name of blasphemy you know so let's look up that word blasphemy get a clear understanding of what the word is really saying so that word blasphemy says slander all right to be deceitful so lucky i don't know why he's doing that shit all right the action or a crime of making false spoken statements damaging to one's reputation all right to a person's reputation man and what did they say about you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans? That you guys were the basis of men. All right? When really you're the Israelites, man. You're the judges of the earth. You know? They made themselves unto the judges. And they made you unto the Edomites. You see? And that's why they say, oh no, you're the cursed people. Why do you think you guys went into slavery? You see? So that's a blasphemous thing to say, man. And it's going to say later on, you know, they, they blaspheme the tabernacle of the Most High. And that word tabernacle meaning the house, the dwelling place, the temple. And the Most High said he doesn't dwell in temples made by hand. All right. He doesn't dwell in buildings made by hands. Why? Because we are the temple of the Most High, the Israelites. All right. So blaspheming the temple of the Most High, blaspheming the tabernacle, you're blaspheming by saying... You know that we're not Israelites. You're blaspheming by saying that we are uh, the basest of men. You know that we're nothing but a bunch of slaves, a bunch of monkey, a bunch of primitive people. And even though my people's mindset is dead and they act like primitive people because of the mindset that they're in, that doesn't mean that they are, you know? So it says um, detraction, you know, kind of like a uh, distraction. So we'll look that up. And it says, diminish the worth or value of a quality or achievement, cause someone or something to be distracted or diverted from. You know, point in case, recently what happened? Kobe Bryant's death, you know? With Kobe Bryant's death, you got everybody on Kobe Bryant's jock, man. Everybody, people that didn't give two shits about him, people that never even conversed about him, you know, people that didn't even fucking know who he was, now all of a sudden, oh man, we miss Kobe Bryant. You know? Saying you're a legend, you're you, you know, you were you were great, you were this, you were that. When he never did one thing, man. You know? Concerning scriptural. You know, concerning something that actually matters, which is this word, this truth. Pushing out this truth, pushing out these vibrations. You know? Those are things that matter, and, and Kobe Bryant never did any of that. But of course, people are going to be riding his jock just to get, you know, praises from other people. You know? So that was a distraction. Why? Because that same day, you know, you had that, that big outbreak of the uh, coronavirus. Well, it wasn't that same day, but, you know, around that time, you had uh, newer reports about, you know, stuff that was coming out here in, 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 uh, in the United States, in Canada. You know, that coronavirus being over here. You had four missiles, four, three or four missiles that were shot, that were shot at a U.S. embassy, embassy in uh, Iraq. 
And all these things were hidden from the from the public's eyes, man. Why? Because it, it was overshadowed by Kobe Bryant's death. You know? Overshadowed by Kobe Bryant's death. And now everybody, you know, talking about Kobe Bryant, even up to date, man. That was on, on Sunday, I believe. You know? It's already been three days and people still talking about that. You know? Honoring him like he was some type of God, man. But when it came to Yahweh Shai actually dying for their sins, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. You know? They even struggle to follow their false uh, religion, their false uh, worship, their false faith. They even struggle with that, man. You know, that's why scripture says that the uh, holy be holy still, which are the prophets, the holy prophets, you know, the elect. And let the uh, uh, unrighteous be unrighteous still, man. You know, let the righteous be righteous and let the unrighteous be unrighteous, man. Let bygones be bygones, you know. If they, they want to be left alone to their pseudoscience, then so be it. Keep following your fake knowledge, man. You know? So, you know, that word blasphemia, blasphemia, it, it's talking about, you know, something that is deceitful, that is untrue. And what is more untrue than Esau Edom? Yahweh Shai said, you know, you are of the, your father the devil and the lust of your father will you do. He was a liar and a vagabond from the beginning, you know? And when he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of himself. Why? Because he's the father of it. You know? So there's no bigger liar than Esau Edom, man. And yes, he's still alive up to this day. He and he lives through his progenitors, through uh, or, or, uh, uh, through the generation of his children. You know? Same thing with the Israelites. We are the Israelites, man. You see, I was just trying to get through this so I can get to verse five, you know, a little bit quicker, because that's really the point that I was that I was going to try and get into um, the name of blasphemy. Verse two and the beast, which I saw was likened unto a leopard. All right. That leopard represents the Greek. You know, he was he was a uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alexander the Great was seen as a as a leopard you know when he was painted he was painted with you know a, a leopard uh covering over his body him and his father philip of macedon you know philip the second of macedon he was also uh painted with a leopard on his on his horse you know that that represents the greek it says in his feet whereas the feet of a bear now the feet all right, the feet represents the end. You know, that's why in that vision, you know, to prove the point, the vision that that Nebuchadnezzar had and Daniel broke down, it went from the head down to the toes. Why? Because the head represented their kingdom. All right, the kingdom of the Babylonian at that time was the golden kingdom. All right, and it went on and on, so uh, so on and so forth. You know, and then it hit the feet, and the feet were the very end. And it was the most unstable uh, of everything, you know. You had iron and clay at the very bottom, you know, which is the most unstable. So if the feet don't work, your body's gonna fall down, man. You know, when you cut off a tree from from a uh, from the ground, you don't cut off a tree by cutting, you know, the top off and then the next part off and then the no, you cut it by cutting from the from the very bottom, the feet. You know, the word itself can be a double entendre, man. You know, defeat. You cut the bottom, you, you're defeated. <laughs> you know, but it says uh, that's what the leopard is. The leopard represents the Greek. The feet, which is a bear, represents Russia. Gog and Magog. You see? Gog representing the king and Magog representing... Uh, the land you know so magog is really the land of russia in uh ezekiel what was it 30 30 ezekiel 38 was it it says uh well 
turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will put thee forth thy mine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed. Give me a second, Salakia. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled to thee, thou garden. Back sword against Israel. Salakia, Salakia. Let's see where it says that. You know what? I think I had brought something out over here. Let's see. I think I had clicked on one of these, if I'm not mistaken. Russia. Let's see what it says. Uh, in Jewish scripture, too, it was the people of Europe who were described as Gog and Magog. Even the name of Moscow, which is ancient capital of Russia, is mentioned. So let's go to Gog and Magog. Mm. According to these teachings, the conflict between Russia and the United States as two superpowers, all right, but the United States being that bigger superpower, being the, the ultimate superpower, says, or the military rivalry between the communists and the capitalist system and their impact over the nations of the world. Now, if you look up the communist, uh, the communist bear, all right, which is a thing, you know, they have the bear with the Soviet, um, the Soviet flag representing the communist, all right, the communist bear. Um, that represents the bear, man. You know, that, that, that it's talked about in Revelations. You know, that's the bear. That's the end of the United States, which is Gog and Magog. You know, it says systems are their impact over the nations of the world. If thus seen as having occurred in, in accordance with prophecies concerning Gog and Magog, these powers cannot be defeated though military force and are to be overcome through prayer and divine in intervention all right and united states is going to be destroyed by way of the icbms you know from what uh russia and these other nations are going to do when they gather forces you know and then from that they're going to turn against each other and then from that they're going to turn against yahweh and yahweh shy when he comes back you know simultaneously so let me see if they have something else um, all right which Magog Gog and Magog is is a Japhetic uh, or Gog I should say is a Japhetic um, nation you know because of uh, the sons of Japheth um, it tells you what their name, you know, the Greek, which was Yawan, and you had the Russian, not really called Russian, but, um, uh, you know, Gog and Magog. So you had the sons of Japheth, but then you had the Edomites, just like they did with the Native Americans, all right, just like they're doing with the Africans, you know, the Hamites, just like they're doing across the four winds of the earth, man. They go in, all right, into those nations, and they write them out and they write themselves into it you know that's the same thing that says in the apocrypha um when the heathen sought to paint their likeness all right the images their likeness into the book of the law you know it was in the book of maccabees i believe uh second maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48 if i'm not mistaken you know but it says down here, uh, Russia, uh, let me see, it's a lucky, I'm over here driving in traffic, uh, mysterious biblical Hebrew seal found in Russia, no, let me 
seem. I had read it earlier. I thought I had saved it. I guess not. But uh, I'll leave that one alone. You know. Um, does the Bible say anything? What does it say? Okay. Does the Bible say anything about Russia in relation to the end times? All right. So, you know, it talks about a lot of scriptures here. But uh, it says the identities of Gog and Magog, Meshach and Tubal are the key to fully understanding the prophecy. And it's true, man. You have to understand prophecy. You know, Apostle Elder Tahar always says that. All the apostles, all the brothers, they always say that. You know, you have to get into the scriptures, man. You can't just, you know, play it by, by ear. Well, I'll just, I'll see if, you know, these things start happening and I'll start believing. No, man, that's why you have to believe when it's early. As scripture state, you know, seek him while it's early, man. And seek him 10 times more than what you did before. You see what I'm saying? And now what I'm saying, that's what the scriptures are saying, man. You know, it says, uh, Gog is a person, whoever Gog is, he is from the land of Magog. And he is the leader of Tubal and Meshech. All right, because you have Russia being the leader of a bunch of nations. And you have the United States being a leader of a bunch of other nations in, in itself. You know, they all have their own allies. And they all came up with a treaty. All right, we're not going to hurt each other. We're going to leave each other alone. All right, but we have to not meddle in each other's businesses. And there you go. You have United States that doesn't keep it. That neither, neither keepeth he at his house. All right, talking about uh, Edom, because he's out there meddling with these other nations, man. You know, they'll 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 create uh, uh, cults, they'll create associations, train them, all right, in their ways, and then they'll send them back to where they're trying to go. Like Iraq, they sent you know, <clears throat> you had a what's his name? You know, he had a big ass mustache. Um, Saddam Hussein. They created the Saddam Husseins. They created the uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. All right. They created all these people, man. They created ISIS. They created them. Send them out there. Call them terrorists. Attack themselves. All right. Just so they can go in and attack them that they trained. You know? All in the name of democracy, man. More like hypocrisy. Because that's exactly what they've been doing. You know? They'll go in and, and, and terrorize these nations. Suck them dry. Alright? And that's why she's known as a whore, man. That's why the United States, That's why this nation is known as a whore. You know? Because she'll go somewhere else, suck them dry. And then leave them. In a worse state than they was before. You know? And that's what scriptures talk about. A wicked woman. A wicked woman will leave a... a, a you know, a, a man worse than he was before, man. You know, but that's what happens whenever you don't turn to the mercy of Yahweh Shai, which is being extended out through the prophets. You know, because scripture also say that a wicked woman, all right, is set up for a wicked man. You know, and it's a blessing when a when a righteous woman is set up for you. It's a blessing. You know, but it says, uh, let me see. There was one. Oh, uh, here it is. It says Magog is a land in the far north. From Israel's point of view all right and that's in Ezekiel 38 15 Ezekiel 39 and 2 most Bible commentators interpret Magog as Russia and indeed Russia is straight north of Israel you know so I have this world map which you can't really see but I have this one over here actually all right this is the world map all right and you have Israel right by Egypt, all right, right above Egypt, you know, right above Saudi Arabia is Israel, and and far north of Israel, you have the land of Russia, man, you know, you have the land of Russia, that's far north, you know, so Magog is talking about Russia, you see, so let me go to Ezekiel 38 and 15. <clears throat> it says, And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding, riding upon horses, a great company 
and a mighty army, you know, and that mighty army is uh, ICBMs, man, you know, those missiles that are going to come to America to destroy the great whore, you know, to destroy that great whore. So when we go back to Revelations 13 and verse 2, continuing on, it says, and the feet and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. All right. Now that mouth of a lion is talking about uh, Great Britain. All right. And reason being, because when you look at a uh, like Okay. Let me uh, go back over here. And I had this one pulled up too. says the lion all right i put great britain lion symbol and it says the lion derived from the coat of arms of of the i don't know if that's do du, dukai or du, you know whatever of uh aquitaine eleanor's uh family it says naturally of course the lion as a symbol of british pride and might was forever identified with the uh, Eleanor's iris, uh, irascible. All right. So it says uh, the the lion symbol is the pride and the might. All right of of the English of the British. You know. So when you go over here and it says, and the mouth as of the mouth of a lion. He speaks pridefully, man. That's his pride. That's his might. You have Donald Trump over here talking about you ain't going to do shit about, you know, America being number one. You're not going to come up against America. All right. This is the place of pride, man. And we all know what the scriptures say about pride. Pride cometh right before a fall, man. You know, and like it says in Job uh, 20 and four, you know, about um you know what let me just get it before i butcher anything job 20 and verse 4 knowest thou not this of old since man was placed upon the earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment though he excel though his excellency mount up to the to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds yet he shall perish forever like his own dung and really, let me come back to this in a minute. All right, because uh, when I get to the rest of Revelations, the point that I'm trying to make, you know, that that's going to come into play also. You know, because, you know, people like to twist what the scriptures really mean. So let me go to Revelations 13 again. And in verse 2, where it says the leopard, that's talking about the Greeks. All right, that's how that's how this empire started with the Greeks. When it's talking about the bear, it's talking about the end of his empire. All right, so the beginning and the end. The beginning was the Greeks. The end is the Russians. And it says, and the mouth as the mouth of a lion. All right, that that mouth of a lion is talking about um, the pride that he speaks, the pride that he carries. All right, the strength, the might. That all represents America, man. You know. Which was, which was from Great Britain. So it says, And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. All right, now if you look up who is the world's uh, superpower, you're going to see at the top of the top, all right, the cream of the crop is going to be the United States of America. They're at the top of the top, man. All right. So just like Rome was back then, all right, the United States is in that equivalent manner is the top of the top. Granted, you know, the United States is much more powerful than Rome ever was, you know, but for its time, it's the equivalence, you know. So this is the Roman Empire, man. You know, this is Babylon, the Roman Empire. You know, all these things are being built up and set up this way. All right, spiritually, you have to spiritually see it. You can't always just physically and tangibly, you know, put out, um, 
you know, evidence every single time, you know, because then what would faith be for, you know, faith is, is for the elect, man, you know, that's what we hang our whole uh, foundation upon, the faith that we have in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and the faith that we have in these scriptures, man, so it says, um, great authority, that means he's in rulership, all right, and like we read in we read in 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 It tells you that Esau's kingdom is the end of the world Alright Esau is the end of the world And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth And what does Jacob follow? Israel What is Israel? The kingdom of heaven Alright So that kingdom that's going to be placed here on earth It's not here yet Because we don't have a world full of peace People are still learning how to You know make better weapons Advancements in weapons and weapons And making technology technological advances all right in destruction and, and and all these things man all right when it t clearly tells you that when the kingdom of heaven is established there will be no room for learning any more weapons of war man you know there is no golden city which is going to happen physically you know but spiritually we are that golden city lord willing i'm part of that number you know, but the elect are the golden city. And then physically it's going to happen too. We are going to have a golden city, you know, to dwell in. And that only belongs to the children of Israel. You know, but it says, And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And what was one of his heads that I mentioned? The Roman Empire. The Greeks, the Roman. You know, so one of the heads was wounded unto death. And that deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Why? Because that's that's what they pushed out. That's the vibration they pushed out. Oh yeah, the Roman Empire was was the best empire ever set up. And you know, I never really heard about the uh, the Medio Persian Empire. I never really heard too much about the Greeks. I did hear a lot about the Greeks, but not as much as the Romans or any other set up nation. The Spanish, the French. Great Britain, the English. I heard about all of them, but the one that was highlighted the most and praised was the Roman Empire. You know? So it says, uh, as his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. <coughs> all right, so let me... <coughs> bring out the uh, <clears throat> go going back to verse uh, verse 2 and tying it in with verse 3 so the deadly wound that was healed is talking about the Roman Empire which is the dragon alright the Roman Empire represents the dragon it used to be seen as the beast alright but once it was put down that beast came back as NATO and the EU, all right, because in uh, 1957, the EEC signed a treaty called the Roman Treaty, and that's where 10 horns or 10 nations, 10 kingdoms came in together, all right, and they made, uh, you know, this treaty, which was Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, um, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Germany, Ireland, England, and West Germany. You know? <clears throat> and that was in 1957, the EEC Treaty of Rome, which later became known as NATO, the EU. You know, that's that's the beast. The beast system. These things that are set up, and that woman that rideth upon the beast is none other than your top of the top the United States of America. You know? That's the great horror that no one loves, man. No one loves America. Back then you had, you know, Italians. You had all kinds of people moving here to America. Why? Why was it set up that way? That way all the Jakes, all right, can start coming into this place, man. You know? You had Jakes voluntarily moving here, calling themselves Italian, calling themselves, you know, of these other nations. That the Most High chose that they they should come over here. 
But now you see these other nations, they stay away from America, man. You know? They might come here to visit, but that's about it. They don't love America. They would never move to America. You know? Because this place is wicked. It's drowned in wickedness, man. You see? So it says... Um, that wondered deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after that after the beast and like I mentioned the EEC treaty you know so let's go into that word wondered deadly wound was healed and the world wondered and it says to wonder wonder at and marvel to be wondered at, to be had in admiration. All right, so people admire, they admire the the, uh, the uh, NATO, the EU. They even admire the great whore, you know? When the Apostle John saw this great whore, all right, Babylon the Great, it tells you how he admired, all right? He admired the woman that sat upon the beast. And the angel told him, you know, why do you wonder after this woman? Because the way, the way that he was seeing it could have possibly been an actual woman. A beautiful harlot, you know. You look at her and you're like, damn. You know, you know better than to do something. You know. But the eyes are still going to try and, and, and look after it, man. You know. And that's probably what, what the Apostle John had seen. When he's seen the, the vision of this woman, you know, he could have possibly actually seen a, a, a woman that looked like that. She looked like a Harley, but she was beautiful, beautiful Harley, you know, which is talking about um, America. It says, uh, uh, let me see, let me read that again. It says, and all the world wondered after the beast. All right. So, wondered after this man, this man's rulership that he set up, this man's kingdom, all right, which this kingdom is, you know, part, a piece of the pie that is of a bigger uh, portion, you know, because it is the whole world that he's trying to take after, you know, the one world government, the one world order, you know, so on and so forth. But America, separating America from the beast system is... Babylon the great the great whore all right that rideth upon the beast you know so it says uh and they worship the dragon which the dragon represents the Roman Empire they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast all right because out of Rome came NATO and the EU man out of Rome came all these uh ways of living you know regulations that they set up you know started out with Rome and even pagan uh, other pagan nations you know the Colosseums they have the football fields the soccer soccer fields that are actually Colosseums and why do you think they have singers sell out you know uh, those certain places man you know for that same reason that is all going back to Rome. That's what the Romans did. You know, selling out those Colosseums. Having a bunch of group of people just being uh, dumbed down, man. It's the same thing. They teach you about the Roman numerals. You know, admiring their, their, their ways of life. Like nobody ever, ever created aqueducts except for the Romans, which is completely untrue, you know? It's not scriptural, but that's what they want you to think. You know, it never happened to anybody else but the Romans. The Romans are the only ones that did it. Why? Because they admire the Romans. Why? Because they are the Romans, you know? Same thing with, uh, you know, when the Romans in 70 AD ransacked Jerusalem, all right? kicked out the Israelites from their own place you have uh, 
you have that statue all right depicting what was the the stealing of the Israelites uh, portion of you know their their belongings their jewels their riches you have Roman soldiers depicted taking all that stuff out of Jerusalem you know now if those Jews that are in Israel right now are the real Jews I'm talking as a whole because you do have some Israelites that are living there all right then that means that they would bring that down because that's anti-semitic you know or how they say anti-semitic which they don't even understand the meaning of that you know but if that was true that they are the Israelites they would bring that down man you know because that's coming up against the people of the Lord but they're not why because they are the Romans man those are their people they're Edomites you know so they worship the dragon man which represents Rome it says which gave power unto the beast all right so now they the same way that they're worshiping you know the they worship the Roman Empire the same way they're giving you know the, that credit to uh, the um, the modern day Rome you know oh no nobody's gonna you know make war with the beast no one's gonna you know go up against America no one's gonna go up against NATO and the EU the EU and the NATO the NATO are gonna fix everything you know it says uh, and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him you know why because he he, he so shows great signs and great wonders man as it's gonna say, you know, dropping fire from, from the earth, you know? And how did he do that? Through the ICBM, you know, the nuclear warheads. Dropped it down on, on uh, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, you know, when he made war with them. So it says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given them to continue 40 and two months. This is the point that I was trying to get to, you know, but I kind of got into the, you know, kind of got into the history a little bit, you know, but I was trying to make, make my point on Revelations 13 and five, because they said that that just means three and a half years. And out of just that, out of just that little bit of knowledge that they got, all that means, you know, the prophets are gonna, you know, be here for three and a half years after they're, they're revealed. And then, you know, they're going to make war with them. And then they're going to be rescued in the seventh trumpet, which is after the three years. And this, this, and that. <clears throat> the Most High, it tells you that the Most High did not give us a specific date, man. A specific time for us to follow. He gives us signs and wonders. All right. But no one knoweth the time or the hour. All right. Down to the hour, down to the minute. No one knows. You know, not until the second is happening and you're being delivered, you know, at that point in, in that second, you know that you're being delivered. You know, but no one knows up to that hour. Nobody knows, man. So you can't be like, OK, well, the clock starts right now. I'm being, you know, it's a tribulation right now. It's, you know, three years from now and a half. I'm going to count it as my salvation. That's not how it goes, man. You know, so the three years and a half really is 350 years that this man is going to be at his peak that this man is going to be at the top all right exalting himself as the eagle you know so let me go into this and i'll go into into this right here all right because the 19 that's a lucky, not 19. Let me get through this, man. You know, you know what? I'm going to make a part two. Lord willing. You know, I don't want to get into an accident or anything. I'll make a part two going into Revelations uh, 13 and 5. So for that, you know, I want to say Shalom. I hope that was edifying. You know, Salakia that I took too long. 
Um, but I am going to make a part two, Lord willing. And it's going to be Revelations 13 and 5. You know, so Shalom. And I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhakadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth through well. And Shalom to the brothers out there kicking out this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.